What? Australia has a past? Well, yes, it does. And one of the best places to learn about a significant period in Australia's past is here, Sovereign Hill. Greetings, I'm Shad, and I'm here in Sovereign Hill, Ballarat, Victoria, Australia. Now, Sovereign Hill is kind of a like a historical adventure park, but it's more closer on the historical side than the adventure side. And its purpose is to capture a very significant and important part in Australia's history, the Gold Rush. The Victorian Gold Rush was a period in the history of Victoria, Australia, approximately between 1851 and the late 1860s. For a number of years, the gold output from Victoria was greater than in any other country in the world, with the exception of the more extensive gold fields of California. Victoria's greatest gold yield for one year in 1856 was 3,053,000 ounces, or 94,000 kilograms of gold. From 1851, to 1896, the Victorian Mines Department reported that a total of 61 million OZ, or 1,893,000 kilograms of gold, was mined in Victoria. So if that doesn't give you an insight as to how big the Victorian gold rush was, I don't know what will. So the significant thing about the mighty Australian gold rush was that it enabled or uh, triggered a huge population boost. Now Australia started off as a penal colony and uh, a lot of the immigration really only happened from people that were sent over from England uh, for crimes and usually it was quite petty crimes as well, you know, stealing bread and stuff like that, but their uh, prisons and stuff were completely overflowing and they sent them over here and that buying passage back was a very difficult thing so they stayed and lived. And that was where Australia first started off its, uh, basically its colonization. But from that point on, it wasn't a very large population at all. It was still a penal colony. And so one of the biggest things in Australian history that helped establish it as actually a, a bit of an independent country was actually the gold rush. Because instead of people getting sent over here but because of crimes and other things like that, people were actively immigrating. Now I should make, put a caveat here, people were immigrating independently, but when gold was discovered here, well you can certainly imagine that uh, there was a lot more incentive for people to move over. So it gave Australia, especially Victoria, a massive population boost. And so what we're seeing here in Sovereign Hill, these are period accurate reproduction buildings from that era, because Ballarat, where Sovereign Hill is located, was one of the main central areas of uh, where, the, where a lot of the gold was. Some of the other areas where gold was very plentiful in Victoria was the Wal Walhalla. Walhalla was actually one of the largest cities back in the day. It's a ghost town now, and I'll do a video on that later on. But Ballarat and Walhalla were two big centers of uh, the gold rush era. Well, Haller has kind of died off, but Ballarat has stuck around and has a lot of history in this town. And so what we're seeing here is very much accurate to the period of the great Australian gold rush. Now what you're seeing here is largely river mining. And it's not real mining, but it's how you search for gold in the water and river systems because there could be a lot to be found. It's a decently good enough place for quartz to form as well. And what we see here are two primary ways in which uh, gold was uh, looked for in the 1800s. First is gold panning. And the method of gold panning in the other way that you see, you see these kind of stone boxes, they're called cradles. And uh, the method of them both uh, is pretty darn simple. Uh, you put a whole heap of kind of dirt ore from the riverbed into either the pan or the cradle, and then you shake it and with water. And because gold is heavy, gold sinks to the bottom. And then you just scoop off the top layer, rinse and repeat until you have a thin layer left and the gold should be there. Now, this isn't the only way in which gold could be mined for, especially in the 1800s. Uh, one of the more uh, I guess more industrious ways is when you're digging big mines to try and find big 
uh, big quartz deposits in the ground and you want to dig it, find these quartz deposits, dig them up, crush them into powder and then through a smelting process you can remove the gold from the quartz. Now if you're an individual miner and you, you could either get a job in a, bit, in a larger mine or you could try and find your own fortune going off on your own but if you're doing it on your own these are the methods that you would need to resort to. Gold panning and also the cradle and any other way of doing it yourself but uh, and you could actually make a decent money if you could find a, a gold nugget and you know a gold nugget the size of a marble or anything bigger than that well that could actually get you a bit of money so yes this is a wonderful representation of the gold fields of the 1800s what you see here is uh, it's a crusher basically well it's a mill essentially but it's not the type of mill that you use to grind flour this is the type of mill i mean look it's made out of stone do you see how thick the stone on that wheel is it's amazing and so what this is made for it's made to, for, to crushing rock okay specifically quartz that's the type of rock that you want to dig up when looking for gold because you find gold in quartz and so they'll dig up the gold out of the ground and put it in this kind of trench here and run this massive heavy wheel over it and that, well, this will crush that quartz into powder and so what's interesting about this it isn't too far removed from medieval technology and uh, this is what they really had to rely on before uh, a bit later in the 1800s where they could use big large steam powered batteries and so these big batteries would have these huge kind of steel they look like pistons and they're big basically mallets and they get uh, pushed up and down by a steam driven engine and just pummel destroy that quartz into a powder and the advantage of that that is technology it's uh, faster and more efficient uh, because this way what you see here in this big old uh, mill it'll take a while they're like uh, pulling this mill round and round. It will be a slow process. You'd need an ox or something um, uh, pulling it along. But still, this is how it was done before, before they had that technology or before they had access to that technology. So like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, uh, Australia's history is very short in comparison to other nations. Uh, we don't really hit the medieval period. And uh, though Australia was settled before the colonial period, the bulk of the significant kind of events happened in the colonial period that helped establish Australia as an independent nation. And as mentioned, one of the most significant events during the colonial period for Australia was the gold rush. So get this, right? In 1851, Australia's population was 437,000. Now think about that, 437,000. In my hometown uh, where I live, and it's not a very big town, but it's got a population of uh, over 100,000. Okay, so that's one quarter of Australia's whole population in the uh, 1851 specifically, right? So after the gold, and, and also out of that 400,000, okay, only around 18% lived in Victoria. A lot of uh, the population was centered around Sydney. Sydney was one of the first areas that were settled in Australia. But after the uh, gold rush, okay, I get this, Australia's population leapt to 1,151,000. So that's uh, an increase of double, uh, over double. And the Victorian population had increased to 538,000. Okay, over 47% of Australia's population after the gold rush lived in Victoria. So before gold rush, 18%, after gold rush, 47%. In some small country towns where gold was found in abundance, right, the population could grow by over a thousand percent. It helped establish new towns that are still around today. Ballarat is a prime example. It's a, a city, not as big as in comparison to other cities compared to the gold rush, but still a prominent city in Australia, big enough, and it's still around, mainly here because of the gold rush. I know the area where I live. I live in the uh, Latrobe Valley area and that area primarily uh, was settled because of the gold that was found just northwards near Walhalla like I mentioned before all established because of the gold rush so I hope you can see that it's kind of difficult to overstate the significance that the Australian gold rush had on helping establish Australia as an independent nation a population boost and also boost in wealth for uh, this land was phenomenal. So a special thank you to Sovereign Hill for giving us this incredible window into one of the more significant periods of Australia's past. I hope to see you next time 
and until then, farewell.